all business. You have for clients. If you lose your contract with any one of your for clients, will you be forced to go out of business due to lost revenue? This is a great statistics question. Many of you want to be small business owners. If you have only four clients, which is a lot for a small business owner, if you lose your contract with any one of your four clients, will you go out of business? This could happen if any one of your four clients is responsible for more than 50% of your revenues. So, for learning project number one, we are going to work on a spreadsheet, an Excel spreadsheet that's very similar to this one. Now, this is not identical to yours, but it's very similar. Okay? First thing, in any professional work, enter your name. So, up here at the top, I've typed my name. You know, you could um, uh, type whoever you are, okay? But make sure you enter your name. That's a, a professional responsibility. Here I have a list of my four clients. And for 2009, these are the revenues that I've generated from those clients. So my business is, you know, it's doing all right. $1,000 from the first one, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000. So you can see I was just making life easy. Now, whenever we want to know how much one client or one product, uh, one of something or two of something, contributes to a whole, a pie chart is right for that. In essence, how big is your particular slice of the pie or one client's slice of the pie? Excel makes those graphs very easy to do. Simply select the client as well as the contract value. See how I've got that all selected? Click on insert, go to the pie graph, and click on pie. Now, typically, I would stay with a very easy 2D pie, but we're going to be kind of exciting this time, and we're going to go down to a 3D pie chart. Look, boom, you're done. Was that hard? That was not hard, okay? Your pie graph is kind of floating out here in the middle. Now, I want to move it underneath, and I've asked you to do that, so you don't want to lose points, so you want to do that. See how you have the edge to the graph? You can put your mouse on any part of that edge. For now, avoid this special corner with the dots. Put it over the edge. See how I have that four-sided arrow? Press and drag, and it will follow. Okay. All right, now, this is an okay graph, except for that it doesn't have a title, and I still do not know what percentage each of my clients contributes. I want to make sure that no one of them contributes more than 50%. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to where it says chart layout. If you don't see that, you might have to click on the design tab. Or, if you have clicked off of your chart, notice how that goes away. You have to click on the, the pie graph. It must be selected. Now, again, here's another cautionary note. If I click too many times, notice how now I've selected something that perhaps I should not have selected. Okay, so I don't want to format that. Click away. Now, just click on kind of a blank area of the pie. And see how only the outer part is selected? Okay, I'm on the design tab. Go to chart layouts. See this little drop-down box there that I clicked? I'm going to do that again. See that there? Chart Layouts group. Click. The very first one is called Layout 1. And you see how that displays as I go to each one. Layout 4. That one's Layout 5. Layout 1 is obviously the very first one. I'm going to click that. Okay, well I thought it okay, yeah. My chart has changed. Excel automatically calculated the percent that each of my clients is contributing to the pie. 10%, 20%, 30%, and 40%. Now, we don't want to leave it like this, because look up here, it says chart title. You would never hand anything into your boss that just said something, you know, generic chart title, you hadn't put any time into it, you just slopped it out to them, right? You're not going to do that. You're going to take the time, you're going to look, make it look good, make it look professional. So you're going to click where it says chart title. And as you click on that, you can click again, and you'll see your cursor flashing in there. Now, what I like to do is to delete all the existing text. I have to backspace and delete. And then I'm going to type some title. How about 2009 uh, revenues 
by client. Okay. Now, I do not want to hit enter at this point because if I do, you can see that it moves me down a line. So I'm going to backspace to get rid of that. Instead, simply click away, and in, in, when I say that, into a blank part of the, the graph, and you can see that the title is finished now. Also, this part of the graph moved, uh, the part that, that describes this piece of the pie, moved off to the side so that the ti it doesn't interfere with the title. Now, we've created the graph, but the reason that we created the graph is because we want to analyze it and we want to think about the information that it's conveying. So I have some questions over here on the side. In, in this example, it says what percentage of total business is transacted with AB Clothiers? And of course, I'm referring to the revenues here. So I can look over here to AB Clothiers, and I've had students give me results in the past, like $2,000. Well, that is not a percentage. We need to calculate the percentage. And we talk in class uh, you know, about how to say this is a part of the total transaction dollars, right, the total revenue dollars. But as you can see down below here, Excel has calculated that for us. So they're saying that this $2,000 is represented in this part of the pie, and it's 20% of the total revenues that we collect. That's good information. I'm going to type it in here. I'm going to type 20, and you can see Excel is already set up to receive that as a percentage. The next question is, what percentage of total business is done with constant catering? So again, I look over here, and I see, well, I've transacted $4,000 with them, but it would be wrong to type in $4,000. Again, we're looking for the percentage. Now, the percentage is 4000 as part of the whole. Okay, now, I just want to explain what I mean by that. My total dollars, if I use Excel's sum function, I'm going to add up those dollar amounts. My total dollar amount is $10,000. So what we're, when we're talking about percentages, we're saying this 4000 is 4000 divided by 10000 right? And so, you know, we can come up here with our our value uh, below. Okay, so I forgot my question. My question is about constant catering. So constant catering, $4,000, but if we look down here, we see that that's 40% of all the revenues that we bring in. So to answer the question, I'm going to make sure that I put in 40%. Now, here's the part that I'm not going to do for you, but I want to briefly discuss. We've analyzed this, and we've used a real business, this data, and we've used a real business tool, Excel. Okay? But the reason that we did that is because we are going to use that information to help our business. So how do we affect the future? How do we plan our strategy? Okay? As you answer, and you'll type your answer in this box, make sure you give me a specific change, and make sure that you support your information but, uh, your statements by referring to information in the graph. Okay, I believe that within our class, you will come up with different solutions. Okay, if this was your business, what would you do? Now, some of you may say, well, I'm going to grow my business, and that would certainly affect your strategy and how you would use this information in your strategy. Others of you would say, I'm going to just have one person, I'm going to be a one-person business for the rest of my life, but still, you want to be safe uh, and not rely too much on any one person. Even though this client is not 50%, 40% is still fairly high. So how would you uh, protect your business and make sure you're not relying on any one client too much? So I want you to tell me, you know, it doesn't have to, I'm not looking for a five-page paper. I'm looking for just some information that will fit in this box and tell me specifically how you would make that change and then how the information in your graph led you to that uh, conclusion.